Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this how to play course space video, we'll be looking at setting up the game. In the previous three videos, we've gone through all the key concepts of the game, but now it's time to look at how to set up. So let's take a look at the board laid out on the table and we'll go through all the steps you need to know to get started. Core Space is played using a series of missions, scenarios with preset objectives. These can be played as a continuous narrative and there's a whole campaign section in the rulebook that you can follow, but most people start out by playing one-off games and that's what we'll do in this setting up the game video example. Just make a note that some missions may have slight variations on the setup rules that we'll go through in this video. If they do, this will be stated in the mission briefing. OK, let's start working through the steps we need to follow to set up our game. And the first step, we need to read through the mission sections of this rule book that comes with the core set. And you'll find that on page 44. Or look at the mission briefings that come with other core space sets, such as the expansions. Each mission has a narrative intro to set the scene, which will help you make your decision as to which mission you're going to play. For your first game, it's suggested that you start with the Salvage Run mission that you can find on page 48. And I've set the table up here with that layout and going by the setup instructions that are included in that mission. Once we've chosen our mission, it's time to move on to step two, where we lay out the gaming mat or mats and the terrain that's shown on the map. However, do not place the cargo crates just yet. The setup diagram for the mission will show how many of each token to put inside each crate. It may also specify key item tokens to set aside before starting. Now it's on to step three, where we take all the large equipment tokens from the collection and put them into the token pouch. Without looking, draw the number shown in the missions diagram for each large cargo crate on the board and place the tokens inside the crate. The remaining large equipment tokens should be removed from the pouch and put back in the box. They will not be used for this mission. Many missions call for specific tokens, usually rare ones, to be part of the random selection before the tokens are placed in the crates. And this is all laid out for you on page 45, so you can get all the details there. That brings us on to step four, where we place all the small equipment tokens into the pouch. Without looking, draw the number shown in the missions diagram for each small and large cargo crate on the board and place them inside the crates just as we did previously. As previously, be sure to include any rare or special tokens in this selection as detailed in the mission, and don't forget to put the lids back on. Leave the remaining equipment tokens in the pouch because these ones will be used during the game. Now it's step five where the players take it in turns to randomly place the cargo crates onto the board in the position shown on the map. In step six, we choose which events will be used for this game as detailed on page 45 again. We shuffle the event cards and place the deck face down at the side of the board. For step seven, we place the entry points around the board as shown on the map. Step eight, we place the purge board and purge miniatures at the side of the playing area. For step nine, decide between the players which NPCs will be used for this game and then place their miniatures and character boards at the side of the playing area. For step 10, if there are two players, use the turn counter as a coin toss to determine which player will deploy their crew first. If there are more than two players, each player should roll the chance die. The player that rolls highest goes first, re-rolling any ties. The winning player can choose any airlock door on the map to be their starting point. The other players then choose their starting points, proceeding clockwise around the table. Note that in a campaign, 
The winner of the previous game can choose their airlock door instead of rolling the chance die or flipping the turn counter. Now we're on to step 11 where each player selects their crew and we'll cover how to select a crew in a future video. The players place their dashboards in front of them with the appropriate trader and class boards in place. Their shipboard should be placed airlock side up in line with their chosen location and the miniatures should be placed onto the shipboard. Next it's step 12 where each player should place pegs into their crew dashboards. Health and skill pegs equal to the character statistics and full magazines of ammo. Unless playing a rescue mission, pegs are always reset to their full values at the start of a game, even in a campaign. And finally it's step 13 where it's time to start the game. The player that deployed last should take the turn counter because they will go first in the first round. With the game set up, we also need to know how to end a mission. Missions will list various objectives, but these do not necessarily have to be completed to end a mission. Sometimes it will be all you can do to escape with your lives. Unless specified otherwise in the mission briefing, a game will end immediately when all traders are either defeated or are back on board their ships. If one crew was entirely wiped out, all of their traders were defeated, that player automatically loses. Otherwise, in a one-off game, if the primary objective was completed, the player or players that completed it are the winner. If it was not completed, the winner is the player with the most traders still alive. If it's still a tie, add up the sale price of all your crew's equipment tokens. The winner is the one with the most money. Of course, in a campaign, it's not quite that simple. You can lose a game, but still come out on top if the end, if you play it right. The campaign section that you'll find on page 52 of the rulebook will go into this in loads more detail. That brings us to the end of the setting up the game video. So come and join me for the next video in this how to play course based series, where we'll look at the order of play and then start working our way through the trader phase. Everything we go through in this how to play core space video series is taken from the core space rulebook and you can buy this separately or find it as part of the core space starter set. And if you haven't got this set already, then I can highly recommend it. And I've done a video where I've unboxed all the contents and gone through it in loads of detail so you can see exactly what's included and a little bit about the game. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll put links in the description below to Battle Systems website where you can get all their products, but also Element Games where you can save up to 20%. And you can also watch videos on how to build the terrain and all the different components that come with it. And then I've done another video where we go through all the tokens and cards in lots of detail too. I've also done videos where you can learn how to paint both Ariana and all the other miniatures that come in that core set. So check out those videos if you're interested in painting your miniatures and I can highly recommend doing that. I hope you enjoyed this video and it'd be great to see you in the next video of the series. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.